everybody. Um, this is Julian with Practice Panther. I'm the only marketing manager here. First off, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today for this quick webinar on how to brand your law firm. Um, just to let you know, if you have any questions throughout this presentation, feel free to send them uh, my way and I will go over them at the end of the presentation. Lastly, uh, we're also going to be recording this webinar. So if you happen to miss any part of this presentation, you will receive the full recording via email at the end of the presentation. Um, with that said, uh, we're very excited to have Nicole Aboud with us on the line. She's going to tell everyone how to build your law, your own personal brand so you can grow your law firm. Uh, so Nicole, first off, I just wanted to thank you so much uh, for being here with us. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Um, it's good to have you. Um, so to start things off, um, I'm going to give everybody a little bio about us. Um, so once again, my name is Julian Gutierrez. I'm the online marketing specialist at Practice, uh, Practice Panther, and I am in charge of all the online marketing. So uh, social media, Google AdWords, pay-per-click, Facebook, content marketing, you name it, um, we're, we're, I'm, I'm, um, I'm managing it. So um, if you have any questions, again, um, feel free to send them my way. And on the phone, we have Nicole Aboud. Uh, Nicole is an attorney, branding expert, podcaster, college professor, and a business uh, owner who helps lawyers and law firms build powerful brands through content creation and social media presence. Um, she's also uh, very passionate about um, helping lawyers uh, take their careers into their own hands and so they can practice on their own terms, uh, which is precisely the basis uh, for her podcast, The Gen Y Lawyer. Um, so it's, it's kind of funny. A lot of people don't know that we actually uh, met through Instagram, uh, which shows to, with, uh, goes to show that branding and promotion does pay off. Yep, it sure, it sure does. And thank you. Thank you for that intro. Oh, not a problem. Um, so here's just a, a little uh, a bio. Um, and that's, there's some of my background and your background. So uh, with that said, um, why don't we get started? Sure, sounds good. Well, first let me say welcome to everyone and thank you, Julian, uh, to you and Practice Panther for hosting me and for the attendees, don't be strangers. I want you guys to introduce yourselves, so please in the chat room let me know your name and where you're coming from, what city you're in and what practice you're in, what practice area, so we can get to know each other. So I'm actually really happy that you guys want to start building your personal brand. Uh, personal branding has been such a huge part of my quote unquote, I guess, you, I guess you can call it success as a lawyer, as a business owner, and a podcaster. So I love that I'm able to share this journey with you guys and teach you how, how I did it and what I learned along the way so you guys can do it as well. So taking the time to build uh, a, a strong personal brand is one of the best ways to spend your time, really. <laughs> it's one of the wisest investments you can make in yourself, in your business, in your career. So speaking from personal experience, uh, when I started cultivating and building my personal brand, and I'll tell you guys more about it throughout the webinar, more and more opportunities started presenting themselves to me as a lawyer and just in the businesses or in the business that I'm growing. So personal branding, very important. So let's start from the top. What is a personal brand? Here's my take on personal branding as I see it. Your personal brand is you just authentically packaged and strategically presented to others in a way that makes you indispensable, right? So it makes you the go-to person in your practice area, in your business, in your expertise. So that sounds great. A lot of people say, what does that even mean? Uh, mm -hmm. You can think of personal branding as the sum total of all experiences that people have when they interact with you. So when they meet you, how do you leave people feeling? What, what emotions do you, you conjure up in people when they think about you after they've met you? Right? So that's your personal brand. That's the effect that you're leaving on other people. I also like to think of personal branding as a promise. It's a promise that each lawyer makes to their clients. Uh, it's a promise that they make to the profession and to their community. So it's a promise of what they stand for, how they can help, so what their value is, and what they have to offer. That's your personal brand in a nutshell. And it's, a, it's also important to note that personal branding is a balancing act. 
So you're balancing your focus on yourself with the focus on those whom you want to help. So your potential clients, your community members. It's taking time to really think about what you want out of your life and what you want out of your career and where you, where you see yourself in X amount of years. And also how it is that you can help others around you and what it is that you want to offer your clients and how do you want them to feel when they think about you, right? So it's this constant balancing act and it will make more sense once we go through the formula that we're going to cover later on. But just keep that in mind. So speaking of this formula that I just mentioned, I, if I'm going to break down personal branding and put it into a formula, this is what I imagine it would look like. It's your vision plus your values, plus your value, and your voice, all together equals your personal brand. So for my, for my math lovers out there, I don't know if there are any lawyers who actually love math, this is kind of what it would look like if you're going to put it in a formula. And it follows then that the, the act of personal branding is really the process of developing a strategy and intentional actions that guide, the, to follow through with the strategy, to guide your personal brand. And we're going to explore these four V's, as I call them, a little bit further in this webinar, but just to give you guys a little heads up as to what each one stands for. Your vision is really the grand picture of what you want to accomplish on this earth, right? So this is the big, what's the big point, right? What, what are you here to accomplish? Your values are the driving forces in your life. What is it that you hold dear? Your value is your unique skill, talent, expertise, experience, uh, this is what we call your unique selling proposition. And again, don't worry, we're going to delve deeper into this. And then your voice, which is my favorite part, is how you actually communicate your value in order to make your vision come true, right? So it's wrapping everything up and presenting it to the world. So what is a personal brand? Like we said, a balancing act going forward. What is not uh, a personal brand? So your brand is not, it, it, it includes your product, so it's your logo, the colors that you might use on your website, the look of your business cards, the look and feel of, of your business cards or anything that you hand out to people. But that's just a small part of your brand, in my opinion. Uh, your brand is much bigger than that. And it's not about bragging, because a lot of people hear branding and automatically they think maybe that involves a lot of self-promotion or self-praise, a lot of selling which I know people run away from. They really hate that. So that's not what branding is all about. But branding is really more about that intangible feeling, right? It's, it's that feeling that you leave people with that I've been mentioning. And it's the hard to describe feeling that separates a great lawyer from another amazing lawyer, right? So what's going to separate two equally competent lawyers? Their brand, their branding. So you can think of branding uh, as education management. So it's helping people understand who you are, what you do, and whom you serve. Right? And we're going to talk about how you do that as a lawyer. But thinking about and working on your personal brand development and management is a critical element of your business and your career development. So from here on, here's what I want you guys to think of. I want you to have the mindset that you are looking at a blank canvas. And Julian, if you don't mind skipping ahead a little bit. Yeah, I think we're on the next yeah. slide. Sorry about Thanks. that. Yep. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> um, so think of your, your life, your career, yourself as um, you're looking at this blank canvas and you're the artist and you've just been handed this blank canvas and you are going to paint whatever picture you want, right? So it's up to you. You're in charge. And you might not be the best painter in the world. But I'm hoping by the end of this webinar, you'll have an idea of at least how to start, how to start, how to start drawing in some lines at least, right? So this is representing personal branding. It's a blank slate, and it's up to you to create whatever image, emotions, anything you want to create on this blank canvas to represent who you are and what you stand for. Some other words that I that are kind of catchphrases, and I I like to keep them in mind whenever I'm doing any kind of personal branding strategy or uh, anything like that are the following words. Intentional, authentic, clear, and consistent. So people like to use many adjectives to describe their products and services. Many, many lawyers use a lot of catchphrases to describe theirs. But these are some of the ones that I've found that I've used to describe who I am and what I stand for, being intentional and authentic. And of course, 
with any kind of personal branding uh, journey strategy, you always want to be clear on what it is that you have to offer and what your uh, value is, which we'll talk about, and you have to be consistent, which is, that's probably the biggest area that I see a lot of lawyers not following through on, right? They, they might start something and they just don't follow through, and then they wonder why their branding isn't working. So being consistent and always showing up, super important. And I don't know, Julian, if you want to jump in here anytime, please do. I know, I'll just keep talking. Yeah, no, I, no, I have to, I have to uh, agree with you. Um, um, like I said, I, I, I do a lot of social media, um, and, uh, and I have a, a long history of doing social media, and, and just, you know, uh, whether you want to um, um, share, uh, you know, information, infographs, blogs, whatever, on any social media, you have to be consistent. And that's a very, very important element when you want to, um, you know, uh, funnel lots of traffic to your website and you want lots of uh, uh, new people to see your, your your you know your brand name. You need to be consistent. And you need to be doing doing it a few times a week. Um, and, and also in addition to that, you have to be authentic. The, the, the quality and the, and the actual uh, the actual product that you're putting out there uh, and your approach has to be authentic. Like you have to give value. You have to um, not just sell a, a, a service, but give them a reason why you're reliable and why you actually care about your product. So that's, I, I, I have to agree that 100%. Um, just to give you an example, YouTube, um, a lot of people sort of like don't think of YouTube as a branding tool. And the, the fact of the matter is that very soon YouTube is just going to take over the, the tr traditional TV. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, if you look at the views, like some of these um, um, YouTube channels are generating millions of views every single month. Um, now, if you think about how much you would have to pay to get that kind of traffic um, on just uh, on, a, on a commercial uh, on TV, it will cost you a lot of money. You can generate the same amount of traffic going to your website and YouTube for free as long as you're unique, consistent, and authentic about the, 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 the content that you're uploading on YouTube. So I have to really recommend YouTube as a source of, uh, as a branding tool that you can utilize. It's completely free, but you do have to provide quality content when you're doing that. Right, exactly. Perfect. So why does it matter to lawyers? Why should we even care about personal branding? <laughs> well, when you're first starting off as a lawyer, or if you're, it doesn't matter what stage you are in your career, people are naturally going to wonder about you as a lawyer. They're going to make, they're going to form opinions about you without having ever met you. And that's something we lawyers suffer from, right? People always judge us without even knowing us and we don't necessarily have the best reputation, which I know is awful and we're trying to combat that. But <laughs> so people are going to form opinions about you. So we can choose to let that opinion be formed for us by others or by those who observe us. Or we can take an active part in its formation and its communication. One reason. Second reason, personal branding is important because look at that number, 1.3 million lawyers in the U.S. And this is according to an ABA survey in 2015. Um, I imagine it's a pretty similar number for 2016 as well. But that's a massive number. That's a lot of lawyers that are out there. So you want to stand out. You want to be seen. You want to be heard as a lawyer and you want to make an impact with what you have to offer. You want to attract clients because you have a lot of competition. You want to make money because, you know, that's kind of important. <laughs> and ultimately, you want to be able to live the kind of life you want and build the kind of career you want. So personal branding will help you do that. Most importantly, when you're faced with an important decision as a lawyer, like whether or not to take on a, a particular client, you have kind of a gut feeling about someone and you're just not sure you're on the fence, having a strong personal brand, uh, sorry, personal brand is going to ground you and help guide your decision making, right? So it's going to allow you to decide whether this client aligns with your values and whether you should take them on as a client or not. And it's also important uh, because I, uh, 
personally, I dislike the fact that so many lawyers feel like there's just one path that they can take as a lawyer, as in they can only do one thing and they have to follow what's been done before, when that is completely untrue. <laughs> and actually, the lawyers that I interview on my podcast have proven that there's so much you can do with your degree, whether you are a lawyer or not, whether you're practicing or not. So branding is going to help you take control of your life and figure out what it is that you want to do. So those are, those are big reasons why lawyers should invest uh, the time and energy in building a brand. And just in case you're not convinced just yet, <laughs> I actually have a few more reasons for you. Hopefully this will, this will convince you. So having a compelling, strong personal brand is going to provide you with the advantage you need in a fiercely competitive marketplace like the legal profession, right? We just mentioned a lot of lawyers not many are, are taking the time to actually build a brand. So if you do, you're already going to be at an advantage right there. And then a well-defined and developed brand lets people know who you are and what you're good at. And we're going to talk about how exactly you do that. But why is this important? Why, why do people need to know who you are and what you're good at? <laughs> well, for clients to want to retain you and for other lawyers to want to refer clients to you, for people to just want to work with you, basically. They need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you. And it's so easy for potential clients to hop online nowadays and search through a plethora of lawyers. So if you can uh, not only stand out, but if you can start building a relationship with these clients before they, before they even meet you, before you even meet them, you're going to be ahead of the game. And you're going to build this relationship through the content that you have online. So we'll talk about that in a bit. Okay? So that's another reason why it's really important. And personal branding is going to help you if you are currently unemployed, um, if you're underemployed, if you're looking for a job, if you're looking to transition. You have a job, but you want something better. Personal branding is going to help you. It's going to give you a little bit of edge because you, uh, you're you already putting into place what it is that you want out there, right? So if you're really taking time to focus on what you want out of your career, that means you're building that brand already. So when the time comes to look for a job, apply to transition, you're ready gonna ha you're not starting from ground zero. You've got some uh, some goodwill built built up already. And then of course, personal branding allows you to identify, to find, and to attract your ideal client or slash customer. It allows you to position yourself as a thought leader in your practice area. And ultimately, a clear personal brand allows you to cultivate the type of career and life you want, which is a you're going to hear that running throughout this webinar. That's something that I really, really harp on and really believe in. So definitely very important. And uh, some quick final thoughts about personal branding before we move on to the formula, the four Vs. Keep in mind that building your brand is going to be something that you're going to do for the rest of your life, <laughs> for the rest of your career, right? It's not a set it and forget it kind of thing. Uh, it's not a one-time thing that you just establish at one point and then that's it. It's something that you're always going to have to work on because you as a person, as a lawyer, are going to constantly evolve. So it, it only makes sense that your personal brand is going to evolve and grow with you. Okay, so just know that this is something that's always going to be happening, uh, something you're always going to be working on. And personally, my brand has changed over the years uh, several times actually. So when I first started practicing, um, I wanted to practice, or a few years into my practice, I wanted to shift over and start focusing on fashion law. It was an area I was really interested in and really passionate about. So I started blogging about it. And in less than a year, I started uh, gaining momentum and recognition as a fashion law attorney. Right? And it was all through my blogging because I knew that's what I wanted to do. And then when I decided to transition to a different area, um, and I started my podcast, I, again, my brand shifted with me, right? So it was, it, it changed. I wasn't afraid to change it because at that point, things changed in my life as well. So it was something that I continued to, to build and I still, to this day, continue to change and evolve and just build up and establish. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so let's delve into the four V's of uh, building a successful brand. I don't know, Julian, if you want to chime in at all, please go for it before I move on. Um, yeah, yeah like I said, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I agree with you 100%. Uh, uh, building the personal brand is, is so important because um, it's, you know, everybody, I feel like everybody's doing the same thing out there. And it's like, 
you sort of get like a lot of options, but how do you know exactly which attorney to trust or which attorney is really going to understand your needs? And the only way the only way you can actually um, make that information available is to you know to to reach these people before they they need you. You need to go out there and reach them before they need your services, mm -hmm. uh, and be um, always you know, uh, relevant and always be given, you know, information about what, what you do um, and also provide information in general like that somebody could use in the future about, you know, uh, w w whatever it is, you know, any, any, anything, any, anything that's educational is going to help you um, or so is going to help your audience. It's, mm -hmm. it's going to return your, it's going to help your ROI. Right. Yeah, no, I completely agree and I really do believe that the lawyer who helps the most <laughs> before clients or potential clients even ask for the help is, will win, will ultimately win. Absolutely, right? so, you know, yes. Even when I'm doing research on some kind of legal issue or matter and I come across a firm that's uh, blogged about that issue extensively, I just I just trust them a lot more without even knowing who they are. So I can only imagine right, that's, the client. That's, like my, that's, that's exactly right, 100%, yeah. right? Right. Perfect. So how are we going to do this? How are we going to build this personal brand? <laughs> now that we know it's really important and lawyers need to have, or at least be thinking about it and building it. Uh, I've uh, laid out four fundamentals of a successful personal brand. So we said vision, values, value, and voice, right? So the four Vs. We're going to start with the first one, vision. This is the beginning of any personal branding journey. You're going to look at your, you're going to take a step back and look at the big picture, right? So this is a little bit of a touchy-feely area, I guess you could say, right? You're really going to take some time and internalize what you want out of life and, and figure out where you want to go. What's the end game, right? But you're only going to take a step back far enough to where you can get a general sense of where you want your life and career to go. We're not going to think where we want to be in 20 years or 10 years because we all know how useless it is trying to predict what we're going to be doing in 10 years or 20 years, right? But we want to get a general sense. Do, do you eventually want to open your own practice? Is that in your future? Do you want to make a move and become partner? Um, do you want to transition out of the practice of law, right? So what are the things that you really want and you hope to eventually work towards? That's the big picture. That's your vision. So but by visualizing and outlining your vision, uh, you'll know where you need to start, right? And, and how you're going to get to where you want to be. So admittedly, this, has, there, this is always the hardest for me to lay out uh, and to verbalize. But as I said, there aren't, um, these aren't going to get answered in a day. So what it is that you want out of life is going to change or it's going to evolve as you grow. But it's important to at least lay down some, uh, some goals for your life, right? So goals are the steps that are going to get you to where you are going to help you reach your ultimate vision, right? So the vision is the big picture. The goals are the steps you need to take daily, weekly, monthly, yearly to get there. So how are you going to figure out what it is that you want? Well, I've written some questions and I highly recommend uh, you guys take out pen and paper and write this down. Whether you're watching it now or the replay, take pen and paper, write it down. I think there have been studies that, that show that writing down, um, writing anything down not only helps you remember it more, but you will actually take action on it. So write the answers to these questions down. Here are the questions. What do you want to accomplish in this world? What do you want to be known for? Where do you see yourself at the end of your career? Uh, what is the ultimate end game for you? Uh, what, and I realize some of those questions aren't on the screen, but what would you do if you weren't afraid to fail? And when you think of the best version of yourself, what are you doing for work? This one's a really important one for lawyers because a lot of lawyers become lawyers because they just, uh, they thought it was one thing and it turns out to be something else and now they're looking for some kind of outlet. So really think about what do you want to do? What, if you could spend any day, if you can spend a day doing anything, and you can envision how happy you feel. What, what, it, what is it that you're doing? What would you be doing? So last question, what would the ideal version of yourself be doing if you could do exactly what you wanted to do? Okay, because this is important. This is where you're gonna work towards, right? I truly and wholeheartedly believe that unless you're in love with what you're doing, unless you're passionate about it, unless you're happy, you're not gonna be able to do it well or last very long. So please find something you love doing. Okay, so those are your goals. Those are, that's your vision. 
Um, again, goal setting, that goals are just the steps that are going to help you get to your final vision. What, it is it, what is it that you need to set into motion? Who do you need to meet with? Who do you need to talk to? Do you need a mentor? Uh, do you need to change practice areas, right? Do you need to take an additional class to learn some kind of skill to get you to where you want to go, right? Those are your goals. Uh, and there are different types of goals that you're going to be setting. We've got personal goals, uh, professional goals, financial, long-term, short-term. So your personal ones are the ones that pertain to your daily activities, like your health, your well-being, your finances, uh, friends, family, right? So what do you want to work 60 hours? Do you want to work 30 hours a week? Do you want to travel while you work? Uh, do you want to have a family? How big of a family do you want to have, right? So these are things you want to think about. Do you want to spend more time with your kids? Do you want to be able to attend every soccer game? So those are your personal goals. For professional goals, uh, anything that relates to your business, your job, your career, right? So again, do you want to open your own practice? Do you want to work for a big law firm? Uh, what do you want to do professionally? What do you want to accomplish? And of course, all of those vary. They can be long-term. They can be short-term. So here's a little exercise for you guys. Again, write it down. It's important. <laughs> and come back and reflect on this every once in a while. But think. A year from now, finish the sentence. I want to, will be, see myself. And then five years from now, same thing. And then my ultimate dream is, OK? And no one's looking at your paper, so you guys can be as honest as you want with yourselves, right? So no one's judging you. Even if it seems like a wild idea, please write it down. Because if it means something to you, you will work towards it. That's what I believe. OK, so write it down. Write some strong descriptors. Write some adjectives in there, right? Because the, the more real and vivid you make it, the more uh, likely it is you'll attain it. <laughs> so go ahead, get descriptive. So that's uh, your vision. Let's move on to values, the second V in the formula. So your values are, like I said, the principles that guide your life. So this is what grounds you and what uh, what forms your foundation, I guess you can say. They're the driving force in your decision making and your action taking. And values change as you change. And they reflect what's important to you at any given moment. So understanding your core values is important when you're crafting your personal brand, when you're cultivating your personal brand, because your values will inform your branding choices and will guide your day-to-day -day decisions, uh, such as which job to apply for and which client to take on. So whether um, so when you're faced with decisions, you're going to check in with your values uh, to see if a certain decision is in alignment with who you are. So there are a lot of uh, a lot of personal values, a lot of common personal values, um, but I've listed a few for you guys just to get uh, just to kind of get it started and get you thinking about it. And actually, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to offer a free, um, a little free guide that has a lot more listed. But basically, here are some examples of common values that people hold dear: um, being family-oriented, uh, hardworking, uh, dependability, uh, diversity. Maybe that's something that's very valuable to you. Security, uh, honesty belonging, a sense of fairness, all these are values that a person would, uh, would relate to, right? And would keep in mind whenever they're building their brand but also making decisions, right? So if, if, you're, you have to make a, if you're faced with a decision of whether or not to hire a specific employee or uh, to apply to a certain job, for example, you're going to look to see if what they have to offer is in alignment with your values, right? So if the, this new firm that you want to apply to is lacking diversity and that's something that's very important to you, then you know that that's not a decision for you that, or that's not a firm for you, right? That's all part of your brand. It's what you stand for. So a uh, key to creating a successful personal brand is to identify your values, identify your passions, which are your hobbies, your activities, and make it your goal to experience those passions in your personal and professional life, right? That's uh, very important for building a brand is to really live, uh, to really walk in your purpose and to really live out your values. So the third V is value. And I'm actually going to take a quick sip of water. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so value. This is one of my favorites, but it's also a really hard one for um, most people to pinpoint. But your value is your unique selling proposition. And this is a, a, a business term, but really it means um, what is it that sets you apart from all other lawyers? 
who are similarly situated as you are, right? In any given city, I'm sure there are hundreds of family law attorneys. So what's different about you? What is it that makes you stand out? Why would someone choose you over the next competent family law attorney, right? So if you're thinking nothing, <laughs> um, a lot of people, like I said, have a difficult time figuring out what it is that's special about them. You're wrong. There is something unique about you. There's uh, some skill, some talent, some experience, something that you possess that no one else has, right? It's that special something that only you have. And I know this is something a lot of young lawyers struggle with. Um, well, I'm sure any lawyer at any age, really. But when you go into law school, you feel like you don't have um, or I guess when you graduate from law school, you feel like maybe you don't have a lot of marketable skills or you don't know anything just yet. Um, but everyone has something that they've learned in their lifetime that they can apply to their career now as a lawyer. So whether you come from a background in computers or you have knowledge about the fashion industry that a lot of people don't, right? Is there something that you possess? Are you really good at public speaking? What's that skill that is going to put you over the edge, right? And that you're going to use and really hone in on and elevate to make you stand, stand out, really, to stand out above the rest, above other lawyers who don't have this skill. Okay? Like I said, this is always a hard one to figure out. So if you need help, enlist the, uh, enlist the help of a family member, friends who know you really well to help you figure out what it is that you have that no one else does. Because sometimes we can't be very objective about ourselves. So definitely ask other people. Okay? But like I oh, said, one, whatever one, it is, I, that's... Uh, oh, yeah. I, sorry, I didn't yeah, mean to interrupt. But, uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, I remember just thinking back, um, like one really... Uh, just back in college, when I used to take, um, you know, philosophy classes and things like that, they used to ask me, like, what would you do if you were, you know, really, really wealthy? If you had all the money in the world, what would you do? Um, and I guess, you know, if, if money is not an issue and clients is not an issue, like, it, that would kind of, like, um, got you to think about, like, something aside from making money or perhaps aside from, like, you know, practicing law, there's got to be something that, uh, something else that you can uh, try and or a hobby or something like that, and then sort of bring it back to, um, you know, that your law practice. So like, if you have a hobby, then try to integrate your your practice into that, or figure out a way where you can combine the, these two things and make it make it different. Because I think that will make you stand out in, in the long term. Mm -hmm. And I know that's um, something I struggled with. It's very hard to ask yourself that question of if money wasn't an issue, because money is a huge issue, especially for young lawyers. <laughs> but, well, especially um, when you're, right. when you're, yeah, especially when you're leaving college and you, yeah. you owe so much money and you're, you're in so much <laughs> oh, yeah. debt. Like you're always thinking, like, okay, how am I going to pay this debt? But you also have to be thinking, like, I need to enjoy my time while I'm practicing law, and I need to be thinking mm -hmm. um, in terms of the, the big picture. So, um, yeah, exactly. it makes perfect sense. Yeah, exactly. And and it doesn't just if you're branding and asking yourselves these questions, it does not mean that you're not being practical about what you want to do and how you're going to move forward. So you're exactly correct. So some questions to actually ask yourself uh, when you're trying to figure out what your value is, what your unique selling proposition is. So what personal characteristics set you apart from others? What life experiences have you had that make you best situated to create your content or offer your product or service? So as a lawyer, it's going to be to offer your service. Uh, what special skills, talents, or knowledge do you possess? And really dig deep and think back <laughs> to a time before law school or right after or whenever when you, when you acquired some skill that you think is really special and valuable. What are some qualities you always receive compliments on? And what's one thing you know more than or know more about than others? Right? So are you really good with a video camera? Do you know different languages? Um, do you have a background in teaching? Right? All these you can use to your advantage in, uh, in many different ways. And we'll talk about how when we actually cover content, which is coming up right now. So the fourth V, and this is where the rubber hits the road. Like this is, so the, the, the vision, the values, the value are great and super important for laying down the foundation. But the voice, uh, the fourth V, is really what's going to actually um, bring everything together, and this is what's going to, uh, this is you putting everything out into the world, right? So this is the actual, uh, the actionable stuff, which I love. So voice, what is your voice? So now you have an idea of what your goals are. Um, you know, you should have an idea of what your strengths are, what your USB, your unique selling proposition is. 
it's time to actually get down to work. <laughs> um, it's time to start speaking up, right? Sharing your voice. Your voice is how you're going to communicate what your value is in order to make your vision come true. It's what you have to say, what you have to contribute, and it's what you know. And it's letting other people know that you know what you know. <laughs> so developing authority is a crucial part of personal branding. So in putting it, uh, putting out into the world this USP, that uh, your unique selling proposition that you possess, and putting it out there, you're going to want to start establishing, it, establishing yourself as an authority, right? As the go-to person, like we said, in your practice area, in your business, whatever it is that you're in. This is especially true in the legal profession, where there's, where there are plenty of competent, powerful lawyers, and the need to distinguish yourself is obviously very important. So you move from being just someone who knows about a practice area to someone who is the go-to person, the authority. So how are you going to do this? How are you going to establish yourself as an authority? And all this ties into your personal brand, obviously. So you're going to do this. You're going to establish your authority, your thought leadership, through content creation, right? So it's not enough that you put up a website, uh, you pick out all the pretty colors, you uh, you order some business cards. That's that's nothing. That means nothing unless you're putting it out in the world and letting other people know what it is uh, that or how it is that you can help, what value you bring to their lives, right? Because they don't they don't care about you. They just want to be helped. Clients want to be helped. Um, and if it's not you, it's going to be another attorney. So you want to make sure that it's you. You're the most helpful one. So content creation is the key to everything, in my opinion. Um, like I mentioned, for when I started blogging, that's when things started opening up for me. That's when doors started opening up, opportunities presented themselves. I changed as a lawyer when I started creating content through blogging. My blog was about fashion law, so it was about the legal and business issues in the fashion industry. I started connecting with a lot of people I didn't think I'd ever be able to connect with. Uh, so a lot of things started happening to, for me when I started speaking up and, and talking about these issues and establishing myself as a thought leader in the fashion law space. Okay, so you're going to want to share what you know, share your value through content creation in an authentic and intentional way. Again, we're always going to keep it real, right? We're going to speak about things that we care about because people, pe people can feel that. They can feel it through your content if you're being genuine or not and whether you care about the subject matter, whether you care about the audience or not. And we're going to be intentional, which means we're going to be strategic about the way um, that we're creating content, how often, and where we're, uh, where, we're, where we're posting, how often. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Don't worry. So if you believe that you have something to say, um, a skill to share, you have a special way that you, only you can help your clients in your practice area, that's what you're going to share. That's what you're going to put out there in the world. So what does content creation look like? What are the different ways, uh, different platforms that you can start creating content on? So I actually have a list for you guys. Uh, but just know that we are living in a great time because there have been never, there have never been more opportunities and platforms available to lawyers to start creating and creating easily and building our brands, right? So not only do we have um, blogging, which has become so easy to just start a blog, uh, as opposed to what it was maybe 10 years ago. But we have video blogs, videos, right? We, every, so many platforms have video options now. Uh, articles, books, uh, we have social media, many platforms to choose from. So engaging on social media and just setting up your social media profile and having a presence on different platforms, the ones that pertain to you and your audience members, that's gonna help you build uh, your authority. There's public speaking engagements. Lawyers love to talk. Why not do it officially and take it on the road <laughs> and speak about what it is that you practice, right? Uh, hold workshops. You can start a podcast like I did. <laughs> so a year after blogging, I decided that I did not want to, well, I didn't want to blog anymore. It wasn't serving me anymore. And I decided to switch over and start a podcast. My podcast is called the Gen Y Lawyer Podcast. And I, I speak with other lawyers who are crafting their own lives and careers and loving life. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just started... one, one quick, one quick yeah. um, comment about this because this is sure. just like, to me, I'm like actually really passionate about this, what, what you're talking about. Um, like it's funny because like people think that, oh, uh, you know, if I write a blog, I can, you know, somebody's going to look at the blog and then, uh, or if I build a website with lots of content, they're going to look at the blogs and then they're going to go to my website 
and then if they ever need help, blah blah, they're gonna you know uh, reach out and give me a call. But the fact of the matter is that you can actually monetize all these different platforms, so they become you know additional um, um, streams of income for you. Mm -hmm. um, if you, you know if you have extremely good content on YouTube, for instance, and, and you're doing video blogs every day. Um, over a period of six months, if you have you know 100,000 subscribers or 200,000 subscribers, you're making really good money from this. Um, and not only are you you know um, giving good content and you're actually making money from YouTube, but you're also advertising your law firm. So you're doing a lot of things at the same time. So um, that applies to, to video blogs, social media, public speaking. You can write a book and a physical book, and you know you can promote the book on your YouTube channel and that's just going to help everything that you're doing. So I, I, I really recommend doing that. Yeah, no, that's definitely very true. And I mean, the topic of branding is so, it's a huge topic and there are a lot of subparts. So we were, for sure, we're not going to cover everything in this webinar, but you're, you're accurate, Jillian. A lot of um, lawyers that I speak with started uh, blogging or started videos only as a means of um, providing help to their clients or just as a creative outlet and they've transitioned them or they've parlayed them into actually income generating blogs and videos so you're you're right so not only is it good to establish your authority but if you're looking for additional side income it's a possibility as well and last one just live streaming um, Facebook YouTube is gonna uh, I don't know if YouTube came out with it already but a lot of platforms a lot of social media platforms are gonna have a live streaming component to them yeah, um, they do have it, but, uh, actually, yeah. It's out already? Okay, there you go. So yeah. you're able to just flip on a camera and start broadcasting to whoever's following you, and it's live, and you can interact with your potential clients um, and, and give value and really share what you know, right? So a lot of different platforms for you to start building content, uh, creating content, building your platform, and getting your name out there. And this will go so far in getting your name out there, your reputation, uh, your value, right? All, all great ways to build your brand. And all throughout, there's um, one person you need to keep in mind, right? Well, aside from yourself, like I said in the beginning, it's a balancing act. It's a, a balance between what you want out of your life and your career and what you want to be known for. And you're going to balance that with what your potential client uh, or your ideal client, I guess you can call them, what they want, how it is that you can help them. So how can you use this amazing skill that you have as a lawyer uh, to help your clients, right? So it's your audience. That's who you need to keep in mind. Aside from yourself, you're thinking about your audience throughout as well. So anytime you do decide to draft a, a, a blog article, think about whether your ideal customer is gonna find this and find it valuable, right? Are they gonna derive any kind of value from it? Okay, so this target audience, this audience member, uh, also known as your ideal client, I like to call them your community members, right? Because you're building a community through the content that you're creating. Uh, it's not just a one-time transaction that you wanna have with these clients. You wanna build relationships, hopefully lifetime relationships. So they become part of your community, I like to call them at least, right? So always keep them in mind whenever you're creating anything. So when you're embarking on this journey of personal branding, have your intended audience in mind. Uh, ultimately, who is it that you want to help? Who do you want to be on the receiving end of what you're putting out there in the world, right? So it's not just about you, it's about them as well, and it's a balance. And always have that one person, that one ideal client that you wanna help, have them in mind when you're building your brand and when you're creating content and pushing it out into the world. So. That is, so that covers the four V's of personal branding. I do want to encourage um, the, the listeners, the attendees, to take some time this weekend or whenever you happen to catch this replay, uh, take some time to really think about what it is that you want for your life and your career and be as um, audacious as you want to be, right? No one's judging you at this point. <laughs> no one's judging you at all. So write it down. Think big for yourself. Dream big and start putting in the tiny steps that, uh, start writing down the steps that you need to take to get to where you wanna be, right? So it's one thing to think about stuff and it's another thing to actually take action on it. And that's really the most important part. So, and like I said, when you start building your personal brand, you will notice amazing things happening, right? So not only will you feel more in charge of your life and your career, not only will you attract more clients, and not just any kind of clients, the kind of clients that you want the kind of clients that you want to work with, right? The kind that you love and they're just attracted to you because you're so clear on what it is that your brand is and what you stand for. Uh, they will start 
they will be attracted to you and you'll start um, generating more more business and attracting more clients as well. So definitely give personal branding some thought. I hope that gave you guys some foundation to um, to start. And I don't, Julian, I don't know if you want to jump in. I think the next slide, I, I do have a special offer for you guys, well, a freebie. There you go. So I actually um, have... Uh, I've written a little free guide, it's called Speak Up, a guide to finding your voice, building your brand, being heard. It covers some of what we talked about today, but if you guys want to grab it, it's free and it has a little bit of a workbook area where you can write your, your thoughts and your notes in there. So the link is uh, bit.ly, so B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash capital um, G-E-T 622. So get 622, you can grab it, download it for free, uh, enjoy it, use it up, and I hope you start building your personal brands. Oh, and just so everybody knows, we're um, at the beginning of the webinar. I said that we're going to send an email with um, the the with everything. So, like this webinar and content, and you're going to get a link to the the to this as well. So you'll have everything included in that email, so you don't have to worry about anything. Um, but yeah, no, I I want to thank you, Nicole, for all this information. It's just extremely useful. I I I could not agree with everything you said in terms of you know. Um, you know, being different, authentic, using all these different platforms, social media platforms, uh, blogging, etc. It's just extremely uh, important nowadays to to really put yourself out there and and really um, you know just go for it. You know, and uh, a lot of people are afraid to do it, but you have to do it. Um, and once you become comfortable with taking action, um, then that's going to be kind of like the standard for you. You're going to be like, oh, what, what can we do something new this week? <clears throat> Excuse me, and um, and you know try to get more people to to, to look at our blog or, or or our YouTube channel. I think that's extremely important, and that's basically the standard nowadays in terms of marketing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. Yeah, once you actually start seeing people engaging with what you're uh, putting out there, so whether you're blogging or uh, speaking publicly or putting on workshops, and and you see people coming and actually. Uh, driving value and benefiting, it, you, be, you definitely become addicted, and then you want to do it more and more. So, so exactly. as long as you get it started, exactly. you'll keep going. Yeah, absolutely. I, so, yeah. I sorry, go ahead. Contact oh, sorry. So, I th our contact information is on the next slide. I don't know. I think it is at least. Oh, <laughs> um, so let's see. So, if people want, oh, we'll get questions in a second. Please do keep in touch. I listed all my uh, all the different ways you can reach me. Send send me your questions, your comments. Uh, anything that you derive from this uh, webinar, just tweet me, send me a message, I will answer, of course, and uh, I don't know, let's take some questions. I think we have about, what, yeah. 10, 13 minutes? Yeah, yeah, so I have a few questions here. Um, okay. One question that I saw that um, I thought was really interesting was, um, which social media sites are the best for branding? So what do you uh, recommend? Right, and I know you're hoping for an answer, right, <laughs> or a direct answer. It will really depend on what practice area you're in. I'm assuming you're a lawyer. Um, what yeah. practice area you're in and what, uh, where is your audience most likely to be hanging out? Right. So if you do right. estate, right, if you do estate planning, your audience is not likely to be on Snapchat. So you don't want to be there. They might not be. Maybe they'll be on Instagram, but for sure they'll be on Facebook. So you'll want to be mm -hmm. on that uh, and LinkedIn probably. But Facebook is probably the biggest one. Facebook is probably mm -hmm. the safest one for any kind of practice area, to be honest. Um, right. But like right. I said, just keep in mind uh, where are your potential clients going to be. A hanging out. Where are they going to get their information? That's where you want to be. If they're mostly on Instagram because they're they're in the fashion mm -hmm. industry and that's who you're trying to target, then that's where you want to be. You want to be on Instagram as well. Yeah, yeah, I have to. Uh, I agree with you 100%. Um, also, I, I have to go with YouTube. I um, I have my own YouTube channel. <laughs> you love YouTube, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love YouTube. Well, the thing is, is you know, if we look at the numbers, um, YouTube gets about two billion searches a day. Mm -hmm. um, and people are searching all types of different things and uh, you know people are looking for legal advice on YouTube believe it or not there you know if you look at um, you know because I'm able to use the, the keyword planner which is um, um, a software where it tells me the keywords and the searches and search volume and how many people are looking for different terms I can tell you that people are looking for a lot of legal advice and nobody I haven't seen really a, a one YouTube channel that, get, that gives um, you know good information week after week after week. Um, it's pretty inconsistent. So like, there's so many opportunities for attorneys out there to take advantage of this. And basically it's just, it's, it's not that hard. You know, you buy a good camera, 
Um, you buy the, the equipment. It's not really that expensive. You start recording blogs uh, about different topics, and then within six months, you're going to get lots of traffic going to your website, and you're going to get lots of leads um, and, and potential clients from doing this. So I really recommend making an investment there because it really, really helps. Now, uh, Facebook is also a great platform. Um, I, I see Facebook as like a, um, a also a branding tool, but it's more in terms of cl uh, client retention. If you have um, a Facebook page and they and they like your page, that's a great way for you to keep your clients updated on new on new things that are happening. So that's also a great tool to to to, to go with, um, definitely. And if you, um, for whoever asked the question or anyone else really, if you're scared to make the plunge into any of these uh, platforms, please reach out to me. I will give you the push you need because <laughs> I will convince you that until you get started, until you get over that fear that you have, everything that you want is not going to happen, right? Like everything that you're hoping happens for, to you in your career, you want to get more clients, anything, it's not going to happen until, until you get over the fear and just start doing it. And I know it's not easy, so please just tweet me, message me, and I'll help you. Yes, absolutely. Um, the next question um, was asked by Josie, and she says, can you give an example of how marketing can improve branding? How, okay, all right, let's see. How marketing can improve uh, branding. So marketing is really... Oh, sorry, uh, content, content marketing. So oh, like I see, blogs I see. and things like that, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that makes a little bit more sense, I suppose. <laughs> Good question, Josie. Um, I really see them going hand in hand. I don't see a lawyer having a brand that exists separate from the content marketing that they're uh, creating or the content creation. Um, I know it's redundant that they're creating. Uh, in my mind, the way that you're sharing this value, and that's really what your brand uh, rests upon, right? Your, the foundation is what's your value? How are you helping people? The only way that people are going to know about it is if you're putting it out there in the world. And it doesn't, so this content marketing, it doesn't even have to be a massive thing. It doesn't have to be a huge deal. It can be as simple as a few tweets, right? Or the, the, respons the responses that you give on social media when people send you questions, for example. Um, so from, in my mind, content marketing and branding go hand in hand. Um, you can't speak up, right? You can't share your voice unless you're creating content. Uh, and like we said, content comes in many forms. So in order to really amplify the message that you have, to amplify this uh, amazing service, to, to really highlight what an amazing lawyer you are and how you are just the best lawyer for the job, is really to lead with your helpfulness. And your helpfulness is going to show up in your content. It's not going to show up by you saying you're helpful, right? It's going to show up by actually being helpful, <laughs> which is providing information. And that's what people want. Right, Hopefully right. Hopefully answer the question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That was uh, one thing I, I, I could add is um, there's different ways of creating content and, and um, different ways of you know structuring your content. And one way that I really like is creating a list of ten things. So like the top ten things that you know that you need to know about this, or the top ten things that you're not doing to get like you know to be ahead of the game. Those those structures like tend to do really well online, and people like to. You know, a lot of people don't want to read two, three, four, or five different pages on content. They want something that they can read, get information information from, and just walk away from it. So um, I definitely recommend doing uh, following a structure like that one. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Julian, we should have another webinar where we delve into the different platforms and and really delve into how to create the content because that's definitely a whole thing on its own. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Right. Yeah. absolutely. I mean, you can spend months talking about. All you know, marketing, digital marketing, content marketing. There's it's just yeah. such a intricate you know topic that yeah, absolutely. It's, it's just there's so much information out there. But the fact of the matter is that there's room for everybody, um, and only a few. I'm sure only a few attorneys are like really, really um, capitalizing on this because they're just taking the chance. It's just going for it, and they're just saying, you know what, I'm going to try this for six months to a year. I'm going to work on you know just branding my law firm. I'm going to create original content, I'm going to put myself out there, and, and, and it really pays off. It really mm -hmm. pays off. And so, but like I said, there's room for everybody. You should definitely um, take a chance. Yeah. And the reason those lawyers are succeeding is because they're actually sticking to it. I think that's probably the most, um, the thing that people don't talk about, the fact that not enough people stick it out and actually remain consistent with what they're putting out. Uh, and the ones who do are the ones who win, right? Because others just drop off or they give up. And that's, right, that's where you right. can really 
showcase what you what you've got. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Great. I think that's the pretty much wraps it up for us. Um, okay. I, I, I want to thank you again, uh, Nicole, for your time and all this information. It's just been absolutely educational and it's been terrific. Um, so thank you so much for your time. I want to thank everybody um, who um, viewed the, the whole webinar. And um, like I said before, you're going to get an email with the recorded version of this webinar. So you can go over all the information, uh, take notes, you know, and you're also going to get a link to Nicole's um, um, gift. So um, you can take that with you as well. So uh, once again, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank you, Nicole, for your time. And thank until next you. time, have a great weekend, everybody. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Thanks.